Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, another major air show is canceled. SpaceX video previews landing of Falcon Heavy rocket, and a lesson about wake vortices learned the hard way. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. Unfortunately, we must report about another great air show that will be canceled this year. After 35 years of presenting what has been labeled as one of the best 10 air shows in the world, the board of directors of the not-for-profit Florida International Air Show have made a very difficult decision to cancel the annual 2015 show, planned to take place March 27th through the 29th at the Punta Gorda, Florida airport. Several factors impaired the organization's ability to successfully host the 2015 Florida International Air Show. The most impactful has been the loss of the presenting sponsor, lack of support from county government, loss of in-kind services, including fire and sheriff's office support, and the refusal of support from the Charlotte Harbor Visitors Bureau. The Florida International Air Show organization thanked the hundreds of sponsors, businesses, and organizations, as well as the thousands of volunteers and the school districts who have supported and participated in the show over the past 34 years. SpaceX is looking ahead by releasing a video that shows how it hopes to be able to recover its Falcon Heavy boosters by having them make a soft landing back on Earth. The company got close to landing a Falcon 9 booster on a platform in the ocean in January, but it was not successful. The Falcon Heavy is essentially three connected Falcon 9 boosters designed to carry a payload of over 115,000 pounds. When it launches, it will become the world's most powerful rocket. The YouTube video animation shows the three boosters separating after launch and each being recovered separately. In the video, all three of the boosters land on the ground back at Cape Canaveral rather than on the floating platform. After the break, we'll see that wing or rotor vortices can bite you. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Unlimited, send us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. All pilots are taught about the dangers of wake vortices that follow behind the takeoff or landing of a large aircraft. These vortices tend to settle behind the aircraft as a rolling swirl and it can spread out laterally. However, the vortex can remain on the runway for an extended period of time if there is a slight crosswind. In this video clip, we're reminded that large helicopters often make a rolling takeoff that also produces a large vortex similar to a large airplane. Here we see a Black Hawk helicopter that can weigh as much as 22,000 pounds departing from a regular aircraft runway. The vortex generated by the helicopter reacts very similar to that of an aircraft. And like an aircraft, the slower the speed, the more severe the vortex. The pilot of this Cirrus aircraft received a hard learned lesson about the dangers of the vortex rolling action when near the ground. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, it's fun to look back and enjoy the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. 
We are precision agriculture crop sprayers, basically. So these are remotely piloted, they're not autonomous. They basically use an industrial level transmitter, 72 megahertz. When you combine the term crop dusting with a manufacturer named Yamaha, it can bring some very unusual pictures to your mind. However, the Yamaha we're talking about is a drone helicopter. Search Yamaha remotely piloted helos on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, a Navy flyby gets a complaint. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument. TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we've summarized some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Pad. The pilot of an F-A-18 Super Hornet is under investigation following a low pass over classrooms at UC Berkeley. The flyby occurred at about 3,000 feet over the city and may have been one brother's tribute to another. The Navy is investigating. The FAA is investigating an incident in which a JetBlue A320 climbed to provide clearance from a general aviation airplane over New York's Westchester County Airport. Air traffic controllers and the JetBlue crew had the other aircraft in sight. Two small fixed wings airplanes collided in flight in the Matsu Valley region of Alaska. It's reported there was one occupant in each aircraft and both survived with serious injuries. The NTSB is investigating. A group of supporters of the East Hampton Airport in New York State filed suits against the town board and the FAA in an attempt to prevent the town board from placing certain restrictions on the operation of the airport. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. Three separate nonprofit organizations join forces with Boeing and Ethiopian Airlines to deliver more than 4,000 pounds of medical supplies and equipment for charities and hospitals in Ethiopia and Somalia. The deliveries carried on the ferry flight of Ethiopian's newest 787 Dreamliner were made to a number of medical institutions via Vital Voices Global Partnership. Horn of Africa Neonatal Development Services, and the Seattle Alliance Outreach. The Boeing Humanitarian Delivery Flights Program is a collaborative effort between Boeing, airline customers, and nonprofit organizations to deliver humanitarian aid throughout the world to communities in need or crisis. Since Boeing's Humanitarian Delivery Flight Program began in 1992, the company has facilitated more than 170 humanitarian delivery flights, including 10 in 2014, working in partnership with more than 50 airlines worldwide. ANN salutes Boeing for the humanitarian work they support. Well, that's our program for Wednesday, February 4th. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories 
anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday. Join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.